Hey everyone, this is Derek, and in this video we're going to use the second derivative test uh, for two variables to find uh, relative mins and maxes and saddle points. Um, so the process for doing this is, first we'll find the critical points like we did in the last video, and then we'll find all four uh, second partial derivatives, and then we'll plug them into this, this formula. And once we do that, we're going to get a value d. If d is greater than zero, we're going to have either a max or a min. We'll go back to the partial of, um, or the second derivative with respect to x, the partial second with respect to x. If it's greater than zero, then we have a min. If that value is less than zero, we have a max. So we calculate this whole thing, that gives us d. If d is greater than zero, then we go back to that value, and then one of those two things happens. If we calculate d and it's less than zero, that means we have a saddle point. So greater than zero gives us one of these two, less than zero gives us that one. And then if it equals zero, it could be any of them or none of the above. Um, actually, I'm sorry, it can't be a saddle. It's a min, max, or neither. Uh, so that basically doesn't give us enough information. Uh, so let me show that with a few examples. Okay, so we have locate and describe the, the relative extreme if they exist for the function. So first thing we want to do is find our critical point. So let's do derivative with respect to x. So that's going to give me a 6x. Y's drop out, and then minus 12, y drops out, 8 drops out. And then we'll do the same thing with respect to y. So that will be a 6y. And x drops out, 8 drops out, and so it'll be minus 6. Okay, so then we'll set each of these to zero and solve. So bringing that over, we'll have 12 equals 6x, dividing x equals 2, and this will be 6 equals 6y, and y equals 1. So now we got our critical point, and it's going to be at 2, 1. So the next thing we want to do is find our partials. So um, with respect to x again, we could just take this and then 1 times 6, and that equals 6. With respect to y again, uh, same thing, 1 times 6, and that equals 6. And then you can see if I tried to do this with respect to y, it would come up to um, 0, as does if I go the other way. And like I said, those tend to match. So plugging this in, we would just have 6 um, times 6 minus 0 squared for d. And so that is 36. And so that is greater than zero, right? So D is greater than zero. So then we come back here and we go, okay, so um, D is greater than zero. So I have a max or a min. And then we go back to um, double X, it is positive. And when that is the case, it's a local min. So that is how we know what that value is. And then the next thing on the homework, I think on the homework it has you enter the critical value in a box, it has you pick local min or max, and then the third box is asking, what is it? So we know the x and the y, they're the, um, the two and the one, so we will just plug those into this equation and then figure out what z would be. So I'm just going to evaluate this at f of 2, 1, and I'll cut away and come back after I've written out. Okay, so doing all that, 2 squared would be 4 times 2, 12, and that will be a 3 minus 24 minus 6 plus 8. So 30 and then 23, so it looks like negative 7. And so this local min is occurring at x is 2, y is 1, and z is negative 7. Okay, so this one, marketing department of a company has determined that if it spends X thousand dollars, so in thousands, on radio advertisements and X that Y thousand dollars on newspaper advertisements, they need to update their uh, their problem a little bit. Uh, the company's revenue in thousands of dollars will be given by that function. Um, how much money should they uh, spend on each kind of advertisement to maximize revenue? So we're trying to find a max. If we're trying to find a max, that's where we use our uh, second derivative test and figure out where that would be and what it would be. So, um, first we got to find critical points. 
So with respect to x, that's going to stick around. So negative 0.12x. Y drops out, that would be plus 5. And then that would be times 1 times 2y. And then with respect to y, that's gone. So that would be negative 200y. 5x goes away plus 6, and then here, 1 times 2x. And so that gives me a couple of linear equations. Um, so this time I'll have to solve a system of linear equations. And so let me get these rewritten. Um, I'm going to bring the x's and y's to one side and then leave the constant over when I bring them over. And that's because what I'm doing, remember, is setting these to 0. Okay, so I set this side to 0, and I brought these two terms over and got this. And I set this side to zero and brought these two over and then got that. And so now I'm going to solve the system. I'm not loving the decimals, so I think I'm just going to be, you know, lazy and multiply that by 100. And then that's going to get me minus 200 plus 200, and that should be good. So, and, oh, it'll actually turn, it'll move that decimal, so that'll actually work out great. So we'll have 12x and then minus 200y. And then 100, right down what I'm doing. And then 100 times 5 would give me 500. And then this side's cool, so I have minus 2x plus 200y equals 6. And then that will give me 10x, that drops out, equals uh, 506. And then dividing, we get x equals 50.6. Um, I'll take this and I'll go ahead and I'll plug it into, um, doesn't matter which equation, I think I did this one. So I did, actually I did this one right here, this version of it. So negative 2 times 50.6 plus 200y equals uh, 6. And then bringing this over, I then had 200y equal 107.2. And then dividing, I got y equals 0 0.536. And then these answers seem really wacky, um, but it's in thousands of dollars. So then kind of once you move the, the decimal, it makes better sense. Um, so once I move the decimal for X, that'd be um, three places. So the X is going to be $50,600. And then Y, I, don't remember, I think that was uh, newspapers, that would be... 536.